Hello. Hi, guys. How are you? Are you guys having fun today? Awesome. Today, our very nice, generous, awesome sponsor is Comcast. And from Comcast today, we have Vic, Vic Poscarelli. So would you like to come up? Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to, first of all, from what I was able to see and what I've heard, um, this was a very well-coordinated, orchestrated conference. So congratulations to everybody who put this on. Can I, um, for, I'm, I'm probably, I don't want to spend too much time here. I just want to obviously uh, thank everybody. We just, Comcast is just very thrilled to be part of this. I did want to ask a couple of questions so I can do a little bit of market research here. Um, for all the folks out here, how many of you are on Facebook? All right, I need you guys to do me a favor. I'm on Facebook too. I, I only have two friends. I feel, I feel like Hillary Clinton now. Um, I only have two friends, my 19-year-old daughter and another colleague. So get the correct spelling of my name. Anybody who friends me, I really want to be able to at least tell my kids that I have more than two friends on Facebook. Uh, I, um, so that's one thing. So it sounds like we have a lot of Facebook people here. We, um, for the, for the folks uh, in the audience, I want to just, does anybody know what's going to happen from both a video production perspective or technology perspective? Who has it figured out 10 years from now what's going to be happening? Anybody? All right. I don't. I, we definitely don't. And uh, Comcast has a lot of very smart people. and. It was interesting, I was just at a conference just recently and the CEO of Google spoke to us, the CEO of Apple spoke to us, Oprah Winfrey spoke to us, who's actually starting her own network called the OWN Network, O-W-N, the Oprah Winfrey Network. Uh, Colin Powell, General Colin Powell spoke to us. But it was interesting um, talking to even the folks like Eric Schmidt, who's the CEO of Google, did not, they really, most people say anybody who tells you they know what's going to be happening three, five, seven, ten years from now is either lying or they're totally going to be wrong. So it's hard to predict technology. So as you guys think about what you're doing with your careers, or and I'm sure not a lot of you are even thinking careers. I have a 17-year-old too that we're looking at colleges right now, and furthest thing from his mind is career. It sounds like some of you folks here have some career um, in mind in the video production. But I think as you think about a company like Comcast, we are, we believe we're in about seven different businesses. And sort of tying this back to the context of video production, we are in the video business. We provide video service. We are in the internet business. We've got about 11 million uh, uh, internet customers across the country. Almost almost a quarter of the internet traffic that happens in the United States happens on our network. Uh, we are in the phone business. We also, what some people may not know, we are in the content business. Comcast actually owns e-entertainment, Style Network, Golf Channel, Versus, uh, CN8. I think you guys uh, saw uh, that today. Uh, we have, so we have quite a few content investments. We also have investments in interactive uh, companies, uh, Game Invasion, Fandango. Has anybody heard of Fandango? Fandango, Comcast bought that last year. Number one movie uh, uh, site uh, to, for people ordering movie tickets. So we are, as a company, trying to figure out where everything is going. So as you see the convergence, as it, people will be hearing about the convergence of media, you'll be hearing a lot about phone, internet, and cable, all these things sort of blending together. And as you think about today, I, was, I, was, um, I heard from somebody probably about five or six years ago, there was, there was an educational consultant who told us when we were looking to build a new school in the town I live in, that the jobs that my kids and our kids are going to do, almost half of them don't exist today. So as you think about moving forward in your career and trying to think about what you do, I think 
you're not going to necessarily know what the potential jobs are going to be that are out there for you. But I think if you can focus on some of the basic skills, uh, learning, learning a lot about uh, the core production elements, learning a lot about being flexible, sh having strong and, and, and uh, strong ethics. There's some core things that you should work on. And one thing just really to sort of tie this back to video that I think is very important, anybody that produces video, and this is a good metaphor for, I think, for life, is that when you start off in video, most people, and I, I actually, I've produced quite a few videos on my own, most people think you grab a camera, you shoot it, and if it's going to be a 10 minute piece, it's going to take you maybe, what, an hour? A couple hours maybe? And I think people don't realize just how hard it is to take something and condense it into a very meaningful short piece. So as I find, and you'll, this someday I think at some point in your life this will probably connect with you, it take, it's a lot harder to make something that's complex, simple, than it is to make something simple, complex. See everybody? Um, so, so just, I wanna just leave you with that. As you think about you know, your, your career, Comcast is very happy to be part of this. Uh, we think it's a great event uh, and really wish you a tremendous amount of success in the future. So thank you. Thank you very much. So, anybody here listen to Jammin' 94.5? Yeah. Woo! Anybody listen to The Morning Show? Yeah. Woo! Because today we have Melissa from Jammin' 94.5 Morning Show. So, come on up. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> um, I wanted to first say thank you so much to Mrs. Mannion. Um, she and I go way back from my high school days at my high school radio station, WAVM, where I officially got my start in radio. Um, and she invited me here to talk to you guys about the wonderful world of radio. And first of all, is there anybody here who's interested in possibly pursuing a career in the radio business? Anyone? A few? Well, if a lot of people ask me, you know, how did you get your start and all this, so the, the best thing that I can say is everyone's story is different. Um, but I would say about 90% of the people that I work with started as interns from college. And some people will tell you, oh, you don't need to go to college if you want to be on the radio, this and that. It, college is a great, great thing for you guys to do. You definitely want to go to school. You definitely want to try and further your education any way possible. And being an intern um, at a radio station, any radio station, you can go to a small market 200 and be an intern there. And all you got to do is learn how to use, you know, learn production, learn how to use the equipment, you know, learn how to do voiceovers, which a lot of that you guys actually already have. How many people have high school radio stations in your high schools? Nobody. Wow. I thought that was getting bigger and bigger. Wasn't Maynard like one of the first ones ever in the country? The high school that I went to, we had a high school radio station, so I actually got a chance to learn a lot about radio before actually going to college, and I went to the University of New Hampshire for two years, studied communications there, and then I transferred to Fitchburg State, and I ended up going to school there. Um, and then I started interning at Jammin, and from there I just worked my way up. I started as a producer for the morning show, and then I actually became an on-air personality on the morning show, no longer a producer. So um, with that, I mean, do you guys, I don't really have like a speech prepared, but I'm willing to answer any questions that you guys have as far as the business and you know how to go about studying and learning radio and what to do and all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> That's always one of the questions that people ask me is how do you how do you do a jam scam? <laughs> That's always like the, one of the there's, there's five questions that are always asked of me every time I do one of these things, and that's always one of them. And um, if you wanted to do a jam scam, there's a phone number you can call, and you can, if you want to play a joke on someone, say, you wanted to do it on Mrs. Mannion, you would call the number and say, I want to do a jam scam, I have an idea. Not that we're putting, I'm not putting any ideas in anyone's heads, but um, you would just call and give them your number, and someone will call you back and get all the information, but Romero literally does what you hear him on the air. He will. They're all taped. I'm not sure if you guys know that. All the jam scams are pre-recorded. He will literally sit at, at the console in the studio, and he will make the phone calls, 
and he will try and prank people, and they don't always work. Sometimes they catch him, and they, they know it's him, but for the most part, everything you hear is, you know, with a few edits here and there, because some people will swear, and obviously you can't cuss on the radio. So for the most part, that's how you go about doing a jam scam. If anybody wants that number, I'll give it to you before I go. Any other questions? I know you guys have a ton of questions. Yes. Honestly, I've been doing it for a long time now, so I'm not nervous. The question was, is it nerve-wracking when you're on the air? Um, I've been doing it for 11 years now. It's a long time. And when I first started, I was definitely nervous because you always try and block out, okay, I'm talking to a million people right now. And you've got to try and block that out because it definitely does get nervous. Yeah, I get nervous. Now, not so much. Now I will literally go to work in my pajamas, uh, put my feet up on the chair as, you know, I do my music report and just have fun with it. Because honestly, that's when we have the best radio is when the three of us on the show are just having fun, being laid back, being ourselves. And a lot of times we'll forget that we're on the air because a lot of the conversations that we have off air are conversations we'll have on the air too. So it's, it's become a lot more natural for us because we have such great chemistry and we've all been doing it for a long time. There was a question that someone had over here. Oh, I already answered it. See, I'm good. Yes. <laughs> That's another one of the five. Do you know a lot of famous people? <laughs> I have met a lot of famous people, yes. Um, uh, I mean, the only thing I can say about meeting famous people is that it's not always all crack what it's cracked up to be. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, did you get a chance to meet 50 Cent or Kanye West or Mariah Carey? Yes, I've met them all, and not all those celebrities are as cool as you think they are. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, like, a lot of times, like, one of my idols, he's a TV, TV actor now, Kiefer Sutherland from 24. Love that show. Everyone asks me, he's one person I have not met yet, and everyone asks me, what would you do if you met him? Honestly, I don't even know if I want to meet him, to be honest with you, because a lot of times, celebrities end up being not what you think they are, and I don't want to be disappointed by that. But in the end, you always have to remember they're human just like us. They do everything that we do. You know what I mean? As far as, like, you know, the baby, they get up, they go to sleep, they eat breakfast, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's cool to meet celebrities, but it's, in the end, sometimes it's not, they're, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And sometimes they can be mean, which isn't fun. Anybody? Who's going to Summer Jam? A few? A few of you? Yeah. Summer Jam's on May 31st. If you guys want to get tickets, they're on sale now. The biggest concert of the summer at the Tweeter Center, so if you guys wanted to go. Um, I did bring a few prizes, um, so Christy can be in charge of handing out. I have a few things. So if you guys want a, a prize, you're going to have to go kiss up to Christy, because <laughs> I got movie passes in there and a couple CDs and school folders, stuff like that. Question in the back? Great question. No, they're not. Um, that's what the world of radio is actually facing right now. We're facing, it's a very difficult time um, because now with the invention of satellite radio, iPods, CD players, MP3 players, like you just said, the internet, radio is completely changing um, and the way you listen to the radio is changing. So we're trying to stay on top of that. And the big thing that the, the company that owns Jammin' and Kiss 108, it's Clear Channel Communications, a big thing that Clear Channel is doing in order to stay on top of, you know, what's going on right now in the world of the media is they're taking a huge focus, putting a huge focus on the internet. And I'll, that's why if you listen to the show, to the, to the morning show that I'm on, you will hear us talking about our internet a lot because we put, we actually hired a, a separate web department of people that are constantly updating every second what's on the internet. So we broadcast on the internet. We have another HD radio station that's on the internet. We have so many things on the internet that you guys can do that you can't do just listening to the radio. So to answer your question, yes, it's, it, it, things are changing. People aren't listening to the radio the way they used to, no. And it's definitely a very scary time to be in radio right now, it really is. But you know, as long as you keep, like Clear Channel, I think, is doing, evolving with the times, I think that it has a good future. Oh. 
That's a good question. He wanted to know how, how the radio station and the companies get money if no one's paying like satellite radio to listen to the radio. Well, easy answer to that is advertisement. Because you hear, obviously, all the same with TV. Like a lot of, you hear ads on the radio, all the commercials. And I know a lot of you guys are always complaining, why do you play so many commercials? Well, because we need to get paid. <laughs> and that's how we get our money is through advertisements. Yes. As far as working on working with the internet and, and stuff like that, yeah, I mean, I, I'm willing to open to try new things. I'm willing to do anything, you know. It's and that's that's another thing I could tell you guys too. If you have a if you are really interested in doing TV, I would encourage all of you to try and learn every single aspect of the media as possible because you really never know what opportunities could be out there. You you know. I would you know, encourage you to learn about the internet, learn about TV, learn about production, learn about radio. You know, it, it really doesn't hurt to have the knowledge of every aspect in the media as possible. Because I do love my job, I do love doing radio, I've been doing it for a long time, but if an opportunity came around from say a TV station, oh do you want to come help us you know, write the news? I love to write, you know, that's another thing that I've learned, writing news, writing ads, writing sponsorships, stuff like that. Learn as much as possible whatever field you decide to go into because you really never know what other opportunities could be out there and you know it's always good to be knowledgeable in every area. <clears throat> she asked about um, music and do I think that music starts to sound the same? Is that Yep. Yep. Um, I think right now, as far as the genre of music that Jammin plays, we play hip hop and R and B. Honestly, in my opinion, I'm a little disappointed with the music industry right now. I think music is definitely starting to become unoriginal. Um, there are people. There are people. There are certain artists that are going outside the box and trying new things. That's why, if anybody watches American Idol, you guys watch American Idol. A big fan of what America, of, of the reason why I'm a big fan of American Idol is because they, they too are changing with the times. And this year, if you notice, they're letting their contestants play instruments. And that's, I think that's huge because not only can they play their own instruments, but you hear a lot of the contestants making their own arrangements of certain songs that they are covering. And to me, I think that's fantastic. As long as you can be original, I think it's going to add so many points. It's going to give you so many points. And that's, I am a little, as far as the music industry right now, I think things are starting to sound the same and, you know, people just aren't being original anymore. And it's unfortunate. But I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure things will change. No, a lot of people think that. We don't pay artists, artists don't pay us to play their music. Not at all. It's strictly if the music sounds good, if there's a demand for it, if people like you guys are calling and requesting songs, we'll play it. That's it. There's nothing else more involved than that. The artists, there, there's been accusations made that artists will pay the radio stations to play their music. That doesn't happen. In, at least at, as far as I can speak for jamming, it does not happen. Um, and that's the only way that we benefit is if you guys like the music we play and you listen and we get ratings and our ratings are number one, which they have been for a long time. That's how we benefit from the music we play. Is there a question over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. The question was um, working for a huge corporation like Clear Channel, um, what input do I have personally with what is played? on the radio. Um, I will say that we do have a team, we have a, pr a program director, we have a music director. Um, and those people are the ones that are pretty much in charge of what gets played on the air. Um, and a lot of times they will ask us for our opinion. Um, I'm sort of out of the demographic now. The demographic that we cater to is 16 to 24 year old men and women. So I'm a little bit older than that, so my voice isn't necessarily heard as much as it used to be, but I would constantly sit in on the music meetings and give my advice. And I think they definitely listen to me. And as long as I have a 
strong ear for good music, which I think I do, I think that my voice is, is pretty well heard. At least I think so. <laughs> yes. Actually, Jammin was my favorite station. And I was very lucky because that's another thing. If you guys are interested in pursuing a radio career, I, I wouldn't say don't shoot for your favorite station, but I would say get your foot in the door anywhere because it's very, very difficult to get to work at your favorite station. Jammin was my favorite station, and Boston is one of the biggest markets in the country. And in or to get the job that I did, I was very fortunate. Most people need to start off very small, say maybe Rhode Island Station, New Hampshire Station, and work their way up from there. And you don't always have to love the station that you w are working at. As long as you have a, a passion for the industry, which I definitely did, eventually you can work anywhere you want, as long as you work hard enough at it. Like I said, if you want to get in the field of radio, start small. Learn the production, learn how to do voiceovers, learn how to use the next gen computer system, learn everything. And as long as you have the knowledge and you know what you're doing, people will look and you're working hard. That's another thing. People will notice. That's how I ended up getting my job. I was an intern for six months working for free. I loved every minute of it because I was there every single day working my you know what off and learning and constantly being in, my, in the boss's face, saying, hi, I'm here, I want to work, I want a job. And eventually they took notice, saw my hard work, and gave me a job. I was very fortunate. Um, but again, like I said, you don't have to be a fan of the station. Be a fan of the industry. And as long as you're working hard enough, you can go anywhere you want. Anybody else? Anything else you guys want to know about? The music we play? The Yes. It's, it, it may sound like it is to you guys, but it's not because technically we are in the same company. So in Clear Channel's eyes, as long as Kiss and Jammin is number one and two, doesn't matter who's one, who's two, they're winning. So personally for me, yes, I think they're my competition. But as far as my company is concerned, they're happy as long as we're both winning. But it's always good to have a competitor or somebody that's out there because competition only makes you better. Yeah. <laughs> do I think Mix 98.5 is a good station? Yeah, sure I do. Um, actually, if you notice, a lot of the Mix 98.5 DJs are former jamming DJs, a lot of them. Um, Lady D, Mark Clark, who else? Fast Freddy, uh, Alicia Murphy's on there too. There's a bunch of people that used to work. Mike McGowan, I believe, is on there now. A lot of them went over to Mix. So yeah, I definitely think that it, it's a good station. Very good question. Do you have a schedule of what you're going to play? And I hate to sort of give away a little secret, but yes, we do. Um, the music that we play on the station, with the exception of the Mix shows, are, is the entire station is programmed. So we'll have the list of the music that we're playing for the entire day already set up on a schedule before we play it. Ex like I said, except for the mixed shows and the specialty shows that we do on the weekends and stuff like that. Yes. We will play the song that the artist is pushing at that moment, which is always their single, because if you think about it, if we start playing random album cuts, People are going to say, where can I get that? And if the album's not out yet, or you know, it, it's not released by the artist as a single, then you guys aren't going to be able to go and get it anywhere. So that's how it works. The artists will have a single that they're pushing, and you'll see the video for it, and they'll say, can you play my single? And that's what we do. We don't normally play like album cuts like that. Question. Good question. Christy wanted to know if all the stuff that we do, mostly with Crazy Kulo, right? I'm sure you're talking about the disgusting stuff. Does it really happen? Yes, it does. He does everything that we ask him to do. He's pretty much, if anybody that, who doesn't listen, Crazy Kulo is like our stunt guy. And we just torture him for no reason because we like to and it's fun. And everything that we have him do that you hear is real. Um, on Friday, if you guys heard, Anybody know what a ped egg is? 
a pet egg. You see the commercials for them? It's this little egg that you use to scrape the dead skin off your feet. Well, I had the idea to take the pet egg and get on all of our feet on the morning show, including Problem Child, who doesn't shower, scrape the dead skin off our feet, and the dead skin collects inside the egg. So we got all of our dead skin inside this pet egg, put it in a cup, and he drank it. And I swear to you, he did. I know, it's disgusting. But he did it. And the video is on our webpage, by the way. Once again, going back to the internet, jamin945.com, everything we do is on the internet. We podcast our shows. Everything that we do, like as far as video, pictures, all on the internet. Yes. N very good question. She wanted to know if our conversations were scripted. Nothing we do is scripted. The only thing that we do that, that is scripted is when Pebbles and I do our entertainment reports. We definitely have everything written out, um, but we do ad lib. We don't, uh, like I personally have come to learn not to read verbatim because when you read verbatim, it definitely doesn't, it doesn't, to me it doesn't sound good. You know, like I will have a script in front of me, but I, I've learned as long as I've been radio, that to go, I can go off the script, start talking about other things. I can add words in here and there. That's a good thing to, to learn, to not necessarily read everything. Um, but as far as our conversations, we may have an idea of what we're going to talk about. A lot of times we'll plan the entire show. Here we're going to interview, um, you know, uh, the actor from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, that new movie coming out. You know, here we're going to talk about my date I had yesterday. We may have a subject matter that we're going to talk about, but nothing that we ever talk about as far as our conversations is ever scripted. Yes. How do you win prizes? That's a very good question. People ask me that all the time. They're like, I can never win. Why can't I ever get through? It, it's honestly just a matter of luck. You, there's really no, you know, strategy involved. If you hear a song and you're supposed to listen for a specific song, call the Call the phone number, and hopefully, if you're the right caller, you'll win. There's really no strategy behind it. Yes. You mean um, after 10 o'clock? We don't, the only time we would ever repeat anything is if you're listening on the way in. Between 5 and 6 in the morning, we do what's called the rewind. We'll play the, the most popular thing that happened the day before in case people, because people, you guys might not know, People that listen to the radio in the morning, their habits are so different. We won't have the same listeners at 6.30 that we have at 7.30. We won't have the same listeners at 7.30 that we have at 8.30. So we try to cater to everyone by playing the most popular bits from any certain day in the morning between 5 and 6 the very next morning. So that way people that are driving into work that early can hear what we did the day before that, that they may have missed it. As a matter of fact, they teach us in sort of in the morning to program our show every 15 minutes because that's how frequently people look at. Think about it. When you guys are on your way to school, how long is your commute from your house to school? Five minutes? Five, ten minutes? So you're driving here. You're probably listening to the radio, hopefully, on your way here. So you're listening to the morning show for ten minutes. You know, so that's all you're hearing. So there are some people that may not ever hear a jam scam because they drive to school or work at quarter past six, get to school or work by 6.30. So they never get to hear a jam scam. So we try to put the best of our show, not only podcast it, put it online, but we also replay it in the morning early for people. That would be the only time we would replay anything. There was a question over here? No? Anybody else? How is what? The money. That's, a great, that's another one of the five. How much money do you make? <laughs> That's another one. Um, money is, first of all, let me just say you don't get into the business for the money, unfortunately. Um, money varies. Um, if you're a producer, you could get paid very little. Um, but it really depends on what market you're in. If you're in New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, any of the small, small, small stations that don't really get much revenue, um, you could be making very little. Um, Boston, like I said, is a very big market. You could make, like, I'm not saying our morning guy. Um, other morning guys make a million plus. Um, so you could, like I said, you could make a very good living doing it, depending on how hard you work and where you are. Um, but then again, you could make very little. No. About, about my hours. Ms. Good question. 
Um, Ms. Mannion wanted to know about hours and how often I work and what I do at night and stuff like that. Um, as far as the actual morning show, I get up in the morning every day around 4, which is, oh, it's hard. It's so hard. It's something you never get used to. Um, the show is over at 10, but we do what's called the after show, which is another segment we do specifically online, again, for the internet. Um, and after that, um, we all stay, we have meetings with our bosses, and we plan things for the next day and stuff like that. We do, do tape some interviews. A lot of t most of us will stay to, at the station till like noon or so. And then after that, um, a lot of us do stuff like this where we go out and we speak at you know, different schools and um, conferences and stuff like that. And we also do appearances at different promotions and nightclubs and stuff like that. So on average, I'd say I do two, maybe three extracurricular things outside of work a week. So, but it depends. That stuff's all volunteer. I mean, the nightclub stuff and the promotions, yes, we get paid extra for that. But like this stuff is all on our own if we want to, like I'm doing another thing at another school on Friday. So this is all stuff if we want to do it, we can. And I personally like to do stuff like this. So anybody else have any questions? Yes. Good question. Um, Pebbles and I, if you guys don't listen, we do a segment on the morning show called The Ladies' Room where Romero leaves the studio and we discuss women's issues um, and things that relate to women. And she wanted to know if, this, if the topics of the, uh, the Ladies' Room are random or if we pick them. We have our Ladies' Room topics picked probably three weeks in advance. And we do the Ladies' Room three times a week. And most of our Ladies' Room topics are chosen from you guys, people that email us that have, you know, situations and questions and stuff like that, things they want to know, you know, and we discuss relationships, beauty, career, fashion, you know, we'll talk about anything. But like I said, our, we like to have our ladies' room topics chosen about three weeks in advance. Anybody else? Nope, nothing's pre-recorded. The only thing that's pre-recorded on our show is the jam scams and some interviews some interviews because a lot of times if you know because we're on the east coast and a lot of actors and actresses that want to do interviews are on the west coast in la so a lot of times they don't want to get up at 3 a.m to do an interview at 6 a.m so a lot of times we have to pre-record interviews but that's all you would hear that's pre-recorded yes oh good question do you get free music um yes i'm trying i'm trying to get, think of a good way to answer that um Yes, as long as we're using the music for research purposes and for, you know, to listen, to decide if we think it's good to play on the radio, yes, we can get free music. Um, I only say that because we're not supposed to accept anything free from anyone, um, companies or artists or anyone. So, but as long as we're using it for work purposes, which is what we always do, yes, we can get the art because the artist wants us to hear their music. So we'll get stuff sent to us from the record labels and you know, they'll ask us our opinion and stuff like that. So yeah, we definitely get free music. That part's cool. How do you find new music that comes out? Um, again, internet, huge tool. Um, YouTube, a lot, of, I don't know if you guys know, Soldier Boy was discovered on YouTube. You know, it's, uh, yeah, like it, you, the internet is such a huge asset to anybody who's looking to find new music. Um, I mean, I watch BET and MTV constantly, um, and I think BET is a lot better with new music than MTV is, personally. But um, it's just being aware, knowing what's out there, you know, uh, doing research, which is, I tend to do a lot, um, and being on top of, of, of everything. Anybody else? Oh, we have raffle prizes? Yes, I have a quick question. Did everybody here fill out a raffle ticket? Okay, you know what we're going to do instead then? I was going to, I'll do a, I'm afraid that we've lost some schools, you know, due to having to get back for sports and jobs. And um, so I want to make this fair. Maybe what we'll do is just give them to your teachers, divide them up and give them to the teachers and let you give them out. What do you think? Does that sound good? That way every school gets some? Okay. <laughs> every school will get it. And then the teachers are cursing me right now. Do a, do a raffle within your own <laughs> group. And I'll give it to you three who came on your own from King Philip. I love you guys. Um, 
And I just want to thank Melissa for coming out to do this. I really appreciate it. No problem. It. Thank you, guys. What schools are here? Wait, 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 wait. What? Which one? Mi what is it? Misco Hill? What's that? It's in Menden? Okay. What else? Millisai, Misco Hill. Which one? Durfee. Durfee High. Newton North? Wow. You guys came a long way. And King Philip. All right. I'm going to try and put that in the mental bank and remember that. I'm going to shout you guys all out tomorrow morning, probably like around 6.15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you? I will. I'll, I'll say hi to you guys all if you guys are listening. Six, like around 6.15. Romero will probably be making fun of me because he was giving me a hard time for being here. He thought I was going to say stupid stuff, which I probably did, but whatever. He wanted somebody to send him a video. He's like, somebody got to send me a video of you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, you guys are going to be on the internet. Does anybody else have any questions? No? No one has any questions? No? Okay. Uh, sure. 